wherever they played Elvis's records, they took, it took off. I only had to play it a time or two, and it's off and running. You know, it started in Memphis, and then it took a while to spread it. There was some reluctance, some disc jockeys, to play it because they, they complained that it sounded like black and this, that, and the other. I remember seeing some letters. That the guy said, well, what is this guy? Is he uh, sounds like a R&B artist, and it sounds like country, and they didn't know how to make it, but wherever they played the record, it was all over. Clement received a letter from a music publisher in New York, Roy Horton. He wanted to find out who Elvis Presley is because sales of his recording of Blue Moon of Kentucky, the flip side to That's All Right Mama, have been going through the roof and making money for Horton and the songwriter Bill Monroe. Neither realized that Elvis and Bill Monroe were about to meet face to face at the Ryman Auditorium, the home of the Grand Ole Opry. 1954, Bill Monroe is very established here. The father of bluegrass music, he's already known as that. And he had a song called Blue Moon of Kentucky, and it was a waltz. It was a mournful waltz, very slow. And, but it was his song, and it belonged as much to the people here as it belonged to him. And this young kid, 19 years old, from Memphis, walks out on this stage with a drummer playing with sticks instead of brushes. And they do this upright bass, this slapping bass that really wasn't from the time. And he sings Blue Moon of Kentucky in a cut time, 4-4 four, four cut time, where you would have thought the place would have gone wild. The crowd is underwhelmed uh, by the performance because of what he has done to one of their standards. These devoted fans of bluegrass music were not thrilled, to say the least, of this slant on this song that they considered one of their anthems. I do know that as he left, many things were said to him. Elvis said, Jim Denny, who was in charge of the opera, told me to go back to Memphis driving my truck. But I don't think Jim Denny actually told him to go back driving your truck. He wouldn't have been that rude. Well, he was a nice man. He, uh, I think he told him, just, Elvis, you just haven't got what we need. I'm sorry, we can't use you. Mr. Monroe, however, had a conversation with him and told him he liked the song. And you can tell that in later versions of the song. Bill and the boys would start it out in the mournful waltz and go into the rock -a boogie sound with that fiery mandolin and that fiery banjo going. So he learned something from the young Elvis as much as the Elv young Elvis had learned from him. And he liked Elvis's version of the song because, he, as he said, it made me far more money than my version or anybody else's version made me.